Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of RC Monday. This week we have the Siku Control, as usual. It's a Fent 939, so quite a big track to this. And in fact I think this is probably going to be one of the last new ones which we're going to do. I can't think of any more off the top of my head. There are some older ones which have now been discontinued which I would really like to get hold of. So I might be doing them in the future. But as for the new tractors, I think we are nearing the end. So we're going to have to make the most of this one. This, as I say, is the Fent 939. And this is a kind of mid-spec CQ control model. It doesn't have all the fancy indicators and flashing lights and everything, but it still has a fair amount of detail. So what we're going to do is, as usual, we're going to get straight into it. We're going to take a look at it all and um, pretty much go from there. Just do the normal thing and see what it has got to offer. So looking at the back of the box, it shows you the detail and specifications of this model. It's actually very similar to the class tractor which we did, if you can remember that one. It's actually in the same playlist as this, so you should be able to find it if you haven't seen it yet. Um, but yeah, it's basically the same one, but only in the Fent styling. It's a 2.4 GHz radio controlled unit. It has adjustable speed control, adjustable steering, headlights, rear lights, one driving and one servo motor, so it has two different motors powering this one. Unlike the uh, Swath Turner which we had, we had the um, the Windrower, the Rake. Um, also, it can be used with CQ Pharma 1 in 32 products. It has a data interface on the back for uh, different implements. And also, it requires five different batteries, or five batteries, three for the tractor and two for the remote control unit. So without any further ado, let's get into this. Break in the seal. Never opened this before. I can never open them. Right, just persuaded it up off screen. That should be do better. So let's remove this out of the box. These tend to uh, crack if you're not careful with them, as I've noticed. So you've got to pull these quite carefully. Put the box out of the way, and uh, I'll move the camera closer. So it has the same controller as the class tractor and also the first John Deere tractor we did. I thought there was actually a scratch on there, but it, it was just a hair, so clearly not. Um, but yeah, same controller as usual. We now have to control that now. Uh, put batteries that in a, in a minute or two. But the main part of this unboxing is the tractor. We'll move the packaging out of the way. So here it is looking at it from the front side. And uh, just going to go for the unusual approach of picking it up with a thumb and a finger and showing you all the angles of this tractor. So you can see the detail, all very good. Very nice. Looking forward to using this. It's a shame the beacons don't work because it would really suit it very well if they did, but it's a cheaper model. Doesn't cost as much as the, the higher spec ones. Um, this one in fact was 80 pounds. So actually probably one of the cheapest ones I've bought. I don't know why the price varies between the different models. I guess it's something to do with supply and demand, but I'm not sure. And uh, yeah, pretty much back at the beginning again. So that's enough for uh, spinning around. I should really get a turntable or something and get it to turn around nicely instead of two fingers, like a crane, grabbing it from above and just spinning it around weirdly. But yeah, that is <laughs> something I can do in the future. Um, so yes, it's got the, the wing mirrors. They're always good, and they fold in so that it, so you can't snap them off as easily. Uh, there is a piece of film on the top, that's just to protect it, that can come off. And uh, also at this point, just tell you that the instructions are also included to tell you how to use this. And uh, probably do the usual thing and try and find out what the specifications are of the life-size model and see the spec of the model itself. So yeah, next thing is to get some batteries and get this thing going. So what I'm going to do now is put the batteries in, and I don't think I've ever actually shown the process of putting the batteries in. It isn't that exciting, so that's why I've usually left it out. But I think just for today, as this is probably the last model like this, I will just show the process. For anyone who is looking to buy one of these yourself, um, so yeah, you're supposed to use rechargeable batteries, ideally. I'm not doing, just at the minute, um, just because I don't have any rechargeable ones, but I should be doing. Um, so I'm just Put those three in there, slots in, and then you just basically do the screw up again. I think the, probably the best thing to do this up with is actually a coin. Because this uh, flathead screwdriver is a bit small, but yeah, a coin is usually the best thing. Now you notice that the lights are flashing. That's because it hasn't recognised the 
remote control handset yet. So when you actually turn the handset on, it connects pretty much immediately actually, that was quite impressive. Don't think it's ever connected quite so quick, but then it should just work. So on this model, you can't actually turn the headlights off, I don't think, I think they are pretty much static. Um, you can't really choose whether you want them off or on. But as I say, this is a cheaper model. Not as much money has been spent on designing and manufacturing it, so you would expect that kind of thing. But still, overall, the detail is still very good. There's definitely no detail loss between the more expensive model and this one. The only thing where it's different is the amount of features which it has. And also, the cab, the, the roof, is incredibly white. It is perfectly white. Um, I'm sure that would probably fade with use, um, but as this is going to be one of those models which is just going to be stored on a shelf and not really used too much, it shouldn't really fade. So the next thing is to take a look at the manual, the instructions, and actually see some of the details about this. I usually go to the wrong page, so let's just find out where the contents is for the UK. Page 7 to 9. That should be fairly simple to find. Okay. So, um, let's try and find some spec for this. I'm looking for the life-size weight, there we go. So hopefully you can see that too. Uh, the lighting isn't great here. So the power in real life is 287 kilowatts and 390 PS. Uh, that doesn't, that's not horsepower, but it could be, I don't know. What's PS? Six cylinders, cubic capacity is 7,755. The weight is 10.83 tons, so that is actually a very heavy tractor, and it has a 60k gearbox, so very high spec model. And then the model in front of us here, um, it has um, one drive and one servo motor, so not even horsepower obviously. The dimensions 180 by 95 by 112 millimeters. It's made by made from metal and plastic parts, and the energy supply is three AAA batteries. Um, the weight is 475 grams and the speed is approximately 0 0.2 meters per second. So suddenly it went dark and we can now try out our light. Now this one only has lights on the front of the bonnet. It doesn't have anything on the top of the cab. I think it would do in real life, but just not on this model. Actually, the uh, rear lights are very impressive. So really, what we need to do is we need to find a job for this tractor. So I think probably in two weeks time, in the next episode of RC Monday, I'll get a trailer, a tipping trailer, another CQ Control, and we'll also use that John Deere of ours with the front loader, the 7R series, and we'll probably load up some of the silage we have in the pit just to the right of the shed there. There isn't really much in there, so I'll probably buy some more. Um, you know, make it look at least half full. Uh, it's just like a bit at the bottom, so if I can get some more of that, then we can actually uh, load up some trailers and probably tip them again in the next bay along, next time just pit along. Because the only thing is I don't really have much to do with these tractors. That is the only downside. This is really just an unboxing and review of this one. It is very good. And yeah, for someone with a lower budget, this is a very good one to go for. It's a decent sized tractor and it's not too expensive, yes it is It is £80 and that price can vary, but I think really when you're thinking about radio controlled units, um, this one, you get quite a lot for your money. Admittedly you don't get any flashing lights on this tractor and uh, also you don't have controllable lights or even three sets of lights that you have on some of the others. However, because it's so detailed and because it does have lights anyway, um, I would still say that this is worth the money and a very good model.
Before we finish, I'll just take a look at the back of the tractor. The only reason why it's flashing is because I've disconnected the handset because I'm running out of battery. Um, so yes, we have got the three-point linkage and the hitch here, and that can attach to any of the multi-farmer tools from CQ. Also, all the CQ control ones. Um, and then we have, next to this, it's quite hidden actually, but just here, there is the port, and that is for controlling things like the swath turner, um, the trailers, the plough, the cultivator, anything really. And uh, yeah, that is used for any accessories you want to get for the CQ control range. Also, just notice that the, the number plate there it does have one. It's CQ291. So thank you very much for watching everyone. Hopefully you've enjoyed this episode. And yeah, like I say, probably in two weeks time we'll be doing a bit of loading up with the two tractors. So we'll have two CQ control vehicles on the go and a CQ control tipper trailer. Most, li most likely it'll be the Joskin because there's a yellow Joskin you can get and uh, that actually tips. Um, so what we, yeah, what we'll do we'll, is we'll uh, use that one on the, the trailer and there we've got the silage pit. We will fill up one side and then we will uh, put it into a trailer and we'll transport it over to the other side. I'm not sure exactly yet, but that is just a general idea. But thank you for watching. Hopefully you like the model. And please do join me again next time for more RC Monday. Bye for now.